Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and one of the not so fun aspects of living in a fairly rural area is that we are subject to the different kinds of insects that come up seasonally. In the midsummer, I think I've mentioned, we get hit badly by mosquitoes and then they subside a little bit but now that we're in the harvest season we're in a blueberry area there's lots of fruit on the ground there's lots of apples on the ground I'll show you some shots of some things outside um, there's lots of fruit flies around and in addition to that we're heavy on the black flies right now so it almost doesn't matter what kind of precautions you take if you have this many fruit flies around. We have screens here on the outer decks, we have screens on our doors, uh, we obviously try our best to keep from leaving garbage and fruit hanging around the kitchen, you know, up here cleaning standards, but no matter how hard you try you're still gonna get these pests. And I, what, in this video I want to tell you the ways I get rid of both of these pests, and it's very similar traps either way. Uh, one is for the fruit flies and the second one is for black flies. The way both of these traps are designed is that they have a pool of, uh, I'm going to say, attractant or bait in the bottom of the trap and then the top of it just has a way that they can get in but it prevents them from getting out. I like this design of trap because first of all I find it to be very effective in both cases but second of all because it doesn't use any pesticides. I'm not expected to use any pesticides around the house or spraying which I would be reluctant to do so if I can deal with them sort of in a very um, targeted way that's the way I would do it. So first up for the, um, for the fruit flies, this one here is based on the very classic thing of apple cider vinegar. I'm going to show you how it's done in the kit here, but I also will show you a do-it-yourself solution uh, because it's not that hard to construct a trap like this. Effectiveness, I'll do a comparison here just so you can see homemade versus the commercial type trap. But these commercial traps are not very expensive either. This was a, a kit that I got for around $5, so it wasn't a ton. And it's already got the apple cider vinegar in it. So um, the design of it is made, and I'll get you a close-up of these that you just pull off a plastic wrap, put on the lid, and the top of it becomes a funnel that the fruit flies can go down into, but they have a hard time flying out of. I'm going to replicate the same thing, just a little, uh, a little thimble full of apple cider vinegar, and I'll put a tape across the top, and I'll try to make a trap that works comparably well. Uh, the second one is one that I'm going to use for the black flies. This one, I don't think there's a good do-it-yourself version. Uh, the way it's made is you, sorry, fill it up with water. Uh, that fills this bag here, and there's something in that bag that creates something foul smelling to me, but it really attracts the black flies that go in through this plastic piece at the top that it's hanging from, but they can't find their way back out. And it just seems to collect the black flies by the hundreds. Let me give you a closer look as to how both of these work. Upon setting out the commercial trap, they found it no problem. Within seconds, it seemed like. I have seen mixed reviews on these commercial apple cider vinegar based traps with some people saying inexplicably that the fruit flies just didn't go for it. And I have to wonder in this case, whether the part of the explanation could be a misdiagnosis of pests because both shore flies and fungus gnats look very much like fruit flies, but certainly wouldn't be attracted to apple cider vinegar. I do have a video that I've done on fungus gnats uh, anyway, that I'll link up above here so you can see how to take care of that problem. Well, here's my homemade alternative to it. This is one of those little red shot glasses or condiment cups. You could use any kind of a, a little temporary container. It's made out of plastic. And in this case, all I'm gonna do to kind of create my trap is I'm gonna place a little bit of masking tape across the top. In this case, just this wide yellow masking tape right here. Make sure it's sealed around the edges. I'll use a second slice to overlap. And I think the trick is to not make such a big hole that they can just fly right back out. But it is a pretty small target and from the other side anyway, this is sticky, so they shouldn't be able to just crawl up. And I Well, it's been four or five days now. It's time to get a look at what these fruit fly traps have done in the kitchen. I hope you can see floating around at the top of the apple cider vinegar there that this trap has done fairly well. It wasn't in a very busy part of the kitchen. It was over by the cupboards, and uh, it's still got, I counted, 41 fruit flies all floating across the top there. So that's pretty impressive. But the one that did the lion's share of the work was this one here. I'm taking the lid off of it, I did that to count it. And I hope I can get you 
that some of the fresher ones are still floating, but the older ones have dropped to the bottom of the solution there. And I counted 85 fruit flies in this one here. And again, that was on the windowsill above the kitchen sink where they seem to have congregated the most. Um, this makeshift one that I made didn't do quite as well and it was also on the kitchen sink. So it was in direct competition with the commercial trap in the center there. I'll pull off the tape here so you can see that it only caught a very few. I think I counted five in there. So it wasn't as successful. I had theorized that maybe the tape would make it harder for them to get in and out of this, but it certainly did not do as good a job as the plastic lid at keeping them. In fact, what I did see, because I just had that little hole in the top lid, and they were finding their way in and out of there, no problem. It seemed the stickiness was no problem for them. So if I were to try this again, I guess I might top it with uh, flypaper or something along those lines. But honestly, when it comes down to it, when you've got a trap like this, that just right out of the box is able to do that amount, and with such a simple design, and these traps will last for two months apparently. And what's more, I, I have to say as, a, as another positive thing about these, is that there was no capture of other non-target insects. So it was really very focused on the fruit flies. Well, just for the sake of a better angle here, I've taken the fly trap down and pinned it to the back of this chair so we can see inside. And what I hope you'll be able to see is that there's actually some little black flies still flying around in there. They've found their way in through the top, but because of the way that inner cone is shaped, they can't find their way back out, which is fantastic. And if you look further down into the fluid there, what you can see now is that there are literally, oh, probably a couple dozen flies that have found the trap, found their way in through the top, and then eventually run out of energy and just dropped down into the fluid. All right, I hope that gives you some good idea about how these simple bait type traps can work on fruit flies and black flies. Obviously there are do-it-yourself alternatives available, but the way I go with it is that if there's a simple and inexpensive commercial solution available, why should I reinvent the wheel? Now I did find these at local stores, uh, but because people will be asking me where to find them, I look for them on Amazon. I've added them to my Amazon lists. That's uh, linked down below the video. Video. If you have any other questions on this topic or anything else to do with pest control around the house and garden, uh, drop something into the comments below the video. I'll see what I can do to help.